Hello. Right. I had a dream. And I'm showing you this picture here. Just so you have some sort of visual idea of um, what I'm seeing when I think of this dream. Now I had this dream back in the end of summer 2016 I think it was and it was the second dream that I considered that God was in my dream um, and I now I now think you know God's in our dreams probably a lot more than we realize anyway this was mother God and as you can see on on here whatever side that is for you and initially I didn't think it was God because I see I've drawn a bit of cleavage there and and I you know so in my dream I sort of found it a bit odd you know why would God be so showing cleavage <laughs> I thought and I thought after a while it's probably something more to do with the way I think of women at that time perhaps anyway especially if you think about my videos more lately then there's there's other things come into play but I won't go into that so I um, I puzzled over this dream for the last two and a half years wondering what it's all about now she spoke to me all right what happened at the beginning I was in a I was like I'm I'm this thing here right I was in a right state. I was knackered, and I just turned up at this sort of land area where, see where I am in this edge here. There was like, this was the edge of the any sign of civilization, and everything out here was complete natural. And um, I was in a right. State. I was totally knackered, and I I did a little shit. <laughs> I just. You know, it's a dream, isn't it? Can't control dreams. What happened in the dream? A uh, little fart and a shit and pop that out. And I was just knackered. And then I saw the animals first. So I saw first, I saw this is my picture of a bear. Uh, it was definitely a big, grizzly bear, like with long hair. And, um,. It was moving quite fast, and you could see all the rippling of um, the muscles and everything, and but under the long hair. And then I saw the moose. It's a Canadian moose, so it, had, it wasn't a Norwegian type of moose. And so I guess this was a grizzly bear as well, what they call them. So this is a Canadian moose with those Canadian type, um, not antlers. They're called something else, like like cones or something and um, that was also then you know going in the same direction as the bear the bear had gone and then it was a moose and then I saw this little hedgehog where is he? Yeah. little hedgehog sort of running sort of up past me and then this woman appeared and she spoke to me and she said I like your colours and then whether she said the words or it was a sort of just an, a bit of knowledge that came across, uh, you know, she wanted me to look after this. And I wasn't sure if it was this little plot here. I think that's what I thought at the time in the dream. And so it felt like a job, you know, like someone was, I needed a job and she was, she liked me, so she was willing to give me a job. Okay. So, um, there are lots of things in this dream that I've thought about. But only a couple of days ago, I got something else from it. One of those things was about the farting and shitting, right? Now, I'm not going to hold... So, I've been a big fart holder in her. And I'm not going to hold my farts in anymore. <laughs> I'm just going to let them out, right? And I think, you know, it makes sense. If you're if you're holding if I've got two hours of meditation to do and I hold in a fart, that that tension doesn't get released, it's back in the body. And you know, any little difference that can help 
make a, a successful meditation session, um, it's worth worth it. So bef from a young age, I you know, I refused to hold in to fart because I might get a skid mark, and you know, so pretty much for all my life, that's what I, until I sit down, pull my pants down on the toilet. Yeah, so that was, that's like a little silly, stupid thing. But it can end up being making quite a bit of difference to your actual life. And, yeah. Now, the, the other thing I've been thinking about, and the reason for making this video, these animals, so the bear and the moose, can't remember quite with their jog. But I, I saw that the hedgehog was something different because it, that hedgehog in my dream, that was a hedgehog that I, at the time, was visiting my house and I'd see it running around and stuff. And I think I saw it like a week or so after this dream running just like it did in my dream. But the bear and the moose were moving and this is something that I haven't thought about before from this dream. Now they're moving and so I got the definite impression that it was Canada, right? Because of the moose and everything. Because I think maybe it was Norway, but it can't have been Norway because that's not a Norwegian moose. Now the trees are here, right? So this was all sort of trees and this was sort of more open grassland. And so it occurred to me a day or so ago that they were moving, they were going, they were leaving this area and they were, they were going. First of all, I just thought they were an introduction to God, like they were introducing me to God, but now I realise they, they, they may well have had a message. And why, why would um, a bear and a moose need to move out of Canada um, and go south? Because I did feel that was the south direction. Um, is the North Pole moving, and with it, the South Pole? So, obviously, there have been people doing videos on this on YouTube for donkey's years, and I've pretty much always just sort of thought, yeah, so what? <laughs> you know, what, what does it matter where the, where the pole is and everything else? Well, pole shift, right. So we've got here the Earth and the, you know, the current North Pole. Now the spin, I'm not saying the spin's changing and I'm about to explain what I'm saying. So there's the North Pole because that's where the thing sticks in. So you've got the Van Allen belts which protect us from sun's, some of the radiation that would uh, ruin our atmosphere, you know, strip the atmosphere, the radiation would and then you know, if, if, if we were exposed to full-on radiation, we'd just melt and die. So the Van Allen belts are quite wide on the edges, and then they come in. They come in like this. So you've got this toroidal sort of shape coming in, and they come in at both the poles. Now, I've heard someone else say lately, part of the reason it gets so cold at the North Pole is because the Van Allen belts are coming in like this and so this bit here basically the cold is getting sucked in from space so you know space is minus 240 degrees or something you know so the Van Allen belts are sort of close to the earth here and that's what that's what makes them cold and there is evidence on the South Pole that you've, you know, that you've got areas or something that wouldn't normally get any snow or anything. I can't remember now. It's, it's something about how thick the ice is and how could it have possibly ever have built up like that. And some people are saying it's a weapon or something like that. But it's possible that because if with these uh, Van Allen belts, like, so this, the cold air is getting sucked in here and that's why... It's all freezing there. Now, the poles have been moving, 
And this is about the, and the, what they're using to measure this is this, you know, electrical magnetic stuff, which is the Van Allen belts. And they're moving, the pole is moving sort of, uh, you know, down towards Canada here. And right at this moment in America, they're, they're absolutely freezing. They've got a really, really cold spell here. So if these poles are moving towards this way, then the same would be true on the opposite side, and you'd get poles moving, the south pole would move towards where you've got the Indian Ocean, sort of moving towards India, but obviously they're still, still going to be way down here, so we're not going to hear an awful lot of that, that you've heard of the Kugulun Islands and the McDonald Islands uh, a bit further up New Amsterdam St Paul but look we're not going to know an awful lot about what's going on there now this also ties in with something that AJ Miller said because when he was doing it and this before I'd come across him in about 2008 and 9 they were saying there's going to be earth changes and that the earth is going to shift. So, but if you, and it does sort of fit in with what he said, because if, <coughs> if the North Pole moves in this direction, say it moves a thousand miles, then this side is going to be of a more southerly latitude. It's going to start getting more of the sort of weather of a southerly latitude. So it's going to hurt Canada and it's going to benefit Russia and Britain there is just in a sense it's not going to affect it much it's just going to get sort of tilted over uh, which is I think one of the things that AJ Miller was saying that the the thing's going to tilt. Now, whether this will affect the orbit or not, I can't say. But, um, yeah. That's what I'm thinking about. That's what I'm thinking about. Like, stuff that's going on, you know, in our world, which is very important. So, well, anyways, because I had thought with this dream, maybe I'm supposed to go and live in Canada. But I was definitely going to wait for a sign or an opportunity from God. Or I'd start looking for one if I wanted to. But nothing had come up. And I'm kind of glad. <laughs> I don't want to now. If they're going to be, if that's going to be the new North Pole. Then, uh, then no thanks. Um, this is my 364th video, could be my penultimate one, I might leave it at 365 and start a new channel, but I don't know yet. No. I'm sure I'm sure I did have other things to talk about. Um, but currently it slipped my mind. No. Nope. I think that's it. So, <laughs> okay. That's it. Bye.